What's up everyone? Welcome back to my channel. Today I am with my doctor, my dermatologist, Dr. Kirby. Nice to see you. Hi. How many years have I known you? I think like seven or eight. It's been a long time. Now, we Jeffree Star, one of my favorite patients, so I'm honored to be yes. here. Yes, we met a long time ago because I had a thick beard and back in the day it was ruining my makeup. So I first came for hair removal, the beard's gone, then we went to tattoos. Tattoos gone, redone, and now we're back for the lips. Now you guys know I'm all about changing your appearance. If you want to do it, don't do it for anyone else but yourself. And we've been doing lip injections for like six years? Yeah. It's been a while. Yeah. yeah. Now people think that they're permanent. So let's break down a few myths. I I'm glad you brought that up. So when we talk about lip augmentation, at one end of the spectrum are things that are very, very temporary. Yep. My favorite substance uses um, old fashioned collagen. Yep. And, and it's really soft, it's really kissable, it's really smooth. The only problem is it lasts about six weeks. Yes. The other end of the <laughs> spectrum are permanent fillers. Silicone, um, there's, a, there's other mm. branded permanent fillers. And I don't recommend those because right. Even if you love it at the time, your face is going to change over time, yeah. and then it, and then you're going to be stuck with that because, as the name suggests, yes. they're permanent. Yes. So very, you don't want that. <laughs> you don't want that. So very temporary, very permanent. What do we find ourselves? A happy place in the middle. So yeah. that's hyaluronic acid-based fillers. Juvederm, uh, Boletero, and Restylane are the most common. And we're doing Juvederm today. And the last time I did it was like a year ago. So my lips are getting smaller, and they're ready for uh, revision. <laughs> so I'm noticing. The bottom has gotten smaller and then the top's just again, see how it's really small in there. When we look at lips, one of the most important things is symmetry. And your lips are very symmetrical, which is great. Thank we God. also <laughs> want twice the volume in the lower lip as in the upper lip. One of the biggest yep. mistakes that occurs during lip augmentation People is- People do the top too much. Thank you. That's and then exactly the bottom correct. looks smaller and then the top's so crazy and I'm like, whoa, slow it down. 100% correct. So we want more volume in the bottom. And then also you have great nasal columns, which are these two things here. If you don't have great nasal columns, it, uh, it, it's very odd. It, very, it looks very awkward. And Is that like the ducky look everyone talks Correct. About? If you don't rebuild the anatomical right. borders and you don't have nasal columns, it looks strange. So we want to really put an emphasis on the lower lip, on the middle symmetrical portion of the lip, yeah. and also augment the nasal column just a little bit. I'm ready. So we're going to just numb me up and uh, we'll be back momentarily. Oh, hi. This numbing looks a little interesting. Now, I know all you watching can make a lot of sexual jokes out there. Tone it down and relax. <laughs> I have a high pain tolerance, everyone. I got my whole body tattooed. I've had three C-sections. So a couple little pinches here. So I'm gonna ask you just to stay forward like this. Mm -hmm. And you can just relax completely. Little pinch on three, curl your toes. One, two, three, little pinch. I can tell I'm in the perfect area, vermilion border. Great. That's the first little pinch. Not terrible, right? No. Okay. Tell me if it hurts you. Oh, I will. <laughs> Sorry about that. Now, let me remind you, every time we inject, mm -hmm. it's more comfortable because then you get more in. And you get yeah, it's not bad at all. I can tell I'm in the perfect place because I have the ability to lift up the needle. So I want to be at the anatomical boundary between the regular skin and mucosal skin because I want to augment the vermilion border on the mucosal side. What does that mean for you? It just means that you have a nerdy dermatologist who has done this a couple times. Before. All right. This isn't hurt bad at all. This is nice. Great. It's a quick little massage. So we're going to do a little pinch underneath here on three. One, two, three. Little pinch. Sorry about that. Perfect. These are uncomfortable. Yeah. It's okay. A little pinch right in the middle on three. One, two, three. Little pinch. I'm in the perfect place. One, two, three. And we're just augmenting what Mother Nature gave you. So right. it makes my job very easy. <laughs> it's a little upgrade. The word doctor is from the word doctorate, which means to teach. So I always tell people, being a physician means being an educator, and that's why I love doing stuff like this because it allows me to educate the public and people who would never normally know sort of how an aesthetic dermatologist practices, right. this opens up me to their world and vice versa. So what we've done so far is we have augmented the vermilion border. The vermilion border of the lip is the side that, that demarcates the normal skin from the mucosal side. So by slightly rolling and augmenting this mucosal side, we give a really sexy, naughty pout to the lips. And of course it's exaggerated now because of the actual injection, but you can see this entire line is augmented, underneath is augmented, and the nasal column. So the hardest part is done, and the swelling that Jeffrey is experiencing is 100% normal at this point. Now, we're gonna go a little bit deeper with these next pinches. One, two, three, little pinch. 
And every single dermatologist has their own way of doing lip augmentation. Uh -huh. I really like to walk backwards and forwards and sort of inspect my work as I go along. I think that finding a dermatologist is just like a tattoo artist. It's really important to find the right person. There are a million people nowadays injecting and doing all this stuff, but go to the right person, just like a tattoo. I've seen so many bad lips or bad with anything. So I do your 100%. research, people. Well, there's certainly no, a good dermatologist is gonna bring you in, explain what he or she does, and then let you make the ultimate decision. And yeah. You just have to make sure that, just like anything in life, you wanna be on the same page with that person. Exactly. So now we did the hardest job. Now we're gonna do the easier pieces. Little pinch, one, two, three. The swelling, we can expect it to go down considerably in the next couple hours, but over the course of the next week, you need a lot of positive swelling and resolution of the negative swelling. And then one of the other things when we do great lip augmentation is you have to remember the lips are a 3D object. They're not a 2D object. And so as a result, one of the things that I like to do, a technique I like to incorporate, is an intraoral injection. So we pull the lip down. This is a mucosal injection, little pinch, one, two, three. So who has the most phenomenal lips that you can think of? Well, Angelina Jolie. Why is that? She has a really natural flare to her lips. So her teeth are flared out, and as a result, it causes her lips to flare out. Mm -hmm. And when the lips flare out, the human eye associates that with sexiness. And since we've met, I've gotten all my teeth done. So when we first did it, my teeth were more sunk into my face. Yeah. And now that they're more pushed out, I think the lips look even better. Absolutely. And the, the lips are sort of like the curtains to the teeth. You know, if you think of the yeah. teeth as like a window, the, the curtains really augment that window. We're almost done. This is a little pinch here that hurts. One, two, three. That made my eyes water a little. <laughs> that one hurts a lot. Don't move. We're still... Come through waterproof mascara. Woo! -hoo! Okay, we're good. <laughs> So bleeding and bruising, 100% normal. Um, you should always have some level of both. And if you're not, then the um, then the person doing the procedure is not getting to the right anatomical level right. because you know the lips are very vascular. There should be blood involved. You don't want to be gushing blood. But by the same token, one, two, three. If you don't have a vascular component to what you're doing, then you're simply mm -hmm. not in the right place anatomically. So we're actually done with augmentation. Yeah. And now I'm just cleaning you up with a little bit of hydrogen peroxide and a little bit of alcohol. And what's really important now is what you do when you leave here. And I tell people, half of lip augmentation is what I do, and half of it is what you do when you leave here. So what do I want to do? I want to pinch here, pinch here, make a little taco there like this, fold in the middle. And I want to do intraoral manipulation of lips. So any little nodules we want to smooth out, the more you massage it, the better you're gonna do. The average person doesn't heal themselves correctly. I think with a lot of stuff, whether it's surgery or anything, they get it and they're like, all right, I'm done. It's like, you have to take care of it if you want it to look good. 100%, this is a partnership and I don't live yeah. with you. And what you do here <laughs> when you leave the clinic is up to you. Yeah. And we'll give you really specific instructions, but if you don't follow them, there's nothing I can do about yeah. that. So anyone getting lip augmentation needs to make sure that they're committed to the process and they need to make sure that they have great aftercare instructions when they go home. 100%. Now, I've noticed a lot of people when they comment on someone that has done lip injections, there's so many like myths. Yes. Like, where did the Botox in the mouth rumor start? Because people, Botox is for, well, it's yeah. for wrinkles and it's for other things, but you don't put Botox in your mouth. Correct. Botox is a neurotoxin, so it prevents muscle movement. And I think people just associate any injection with Botox. With Botox. They do. They so, just lump it in the same category. I'm like, that's not exactly. the right thing. <laughs> It's very, very normal that the lips are going to be dry after this just because of the amount of manipulation we did to them. We poked, yeah. we prodded, we messed with them. So this is just plain old-fashioned Vaseline. It's my favorite moisturizer for the lips after a procedure like this. And we just want to put it on there, put a nice thick coat so that the lips, it does nothing other than help with the, the dryness that you right. can expect to experience. And then also, let me remind you, what you see right now is very, very swollen and asymmetrical, and that's completely normal. Yeah. Um, any asymmetry you see, you should you can massage out yourself, and over the course of the next week, which is probably when you'll do this follow-up video, you'll see the final results. Yep. Some practitioners will say don't massage to the juvenile or right. the wrestling because it's where it, where we want it where to it's be. Where it's supposed to be, right. I disagree with that wholeheartedly. Um, once again, this goes back to the mantra of looking in the mirror and massaging them the way you want them to look because you have the ability to manipulate them all right. Um, uh, so five minutes out of every hour for the rest of today is your job to yep. to massage them. Questions for me? I think I'm a veteran. We've been doing this for a long time, so I'm question free today. You're gonna do great. Massage, massage, massage. Call me with any questions. Um, I'd love to get a picture in a week and see how they look. Perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. All right, guys. I am really numbed up and swollen, <laughs> so I will see you shortly.